At Music Con Brio, when we learn to read music, we learn using directional reading. What that means is that we're looking at the shape of the notes on the staff and relating that to their position on the keyboard. So if the notes are going higher like this, that means I'm going to be playing notes going to the right on the keyboard up towards the high notes. If the notes are going lower on the staff like this, they're going lower and so I'm going to be moving towards the left on the piano closer to the low notes. If the notes are all on the same line or space, I'm going to stay on the same key. If you learned to play piano as a child, this is likely different than how you learn to read. So there's a couple of reasons why I think this is so important. First, if I am learning based on note names, like this is G, A, B. Okay, that tells me what key, but it doesn't give me any information about what finger to use. I could have any finger on a G. So if I see, okay, that's a G, it doesn't actually tell me what I'm going to do with my hand. The second reason is that it doesn't give me any information about how the notes connect to the ones around them. If I'm going one note at a time, G, A, B, I'm going to end up with something like this. Okay, that's a G. Which finger? Okay, there's my G. Okay, my next note is an A. There it is. Next finger, okay, that's a B. Where is it? There. You're going to end up with a lot of sort of hunt and peck playing, and it's a very slow process. This is sort of the equivalent of learning to read by sounding out every word letter by letter. You can do it, but it's going to be really slow. We read by shape and direction. Start, up, up down, down, that tells me right away what I need to do with my hand because I know that going up is like this and going down is like this. And it tells me how my notes relate to the ones around them. So I'm gonna get a much more musical sound. My students that learn to read this way end up being able to read much more fluently. They can decode larger pieces of music more comfortably and they're a lot more comfortable and confident moving all around the piano when we get to that stage. So if this is a new way of reading music for you, or if you're brand new to reading music altogether, keep watching. I'm going to give you a little overview of how I teach students to learn to read a new song so that you know how to support your student at home. Next one is to go through and analyze the direction of the notes. We're going to start by marking sames. So that's places where the note is on the same line or space. I'm just going to mark those with a red line. You can use any color or just a regular pencil. So here and here. Once you've found the sames, you're going to look for ups and downs. If you have a student that is about seven or older, they can probably just do it visually. You can point here to here or draw a line and have them tell you up, down, up, down. When they're first learning, you want to do this out loud first so that you're thinking it through before playing. If your student is younger than seven, it might be hard for them to visualize the ups and downs quickly. And so for those students, as they're telling you up and down, you want to go through and draw up arrows and down arrows. You can even make like a really exaggerated direction if needed. Up, down, same, 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 up, up, down, up, down, down. Okay, so they've gone through and they've analyzed either verbally or with a pencil, ups, downs, and sames. Step two is to figure out your starting note. And for that, you're going to need to look at the beginning of the song for three pieces of information. First, we need to know what hand. And that is this symbol right here. This one is a treble clef. And when I see a treble clef, for beginners, that's telling me to use my right hand. There's exceptions to that as we get older, but for right now, treble clef right bass clef for left hand and I'll just draw a bass clef here so you can know what that looks like. That is this one here. It's got a dot, half of a heart, and two little dots. That's our bass clef and that's going to be left hand. Okay, so we've figured out which hand. Now we need to know what finger and that's going to be right at the very beginning. You'll always see a number right above your first note. That tells me what finger number to use. And then I'm going to look to my first note so I know which key to play. This is a G. We will be doing this in lessons together and marking it in. And later I will show you how to figure that out as well. Okay, so I've figured out my starting position. I need to have my right hand, finger number one, on G. 
Okay, so my starting hand position looks like this. I have my right hand, finger one is my thumb, and the G, which is right here inside the three black keys. I'm gonna put all my other fingers out on the keys next door. First chunk, I've just marked finger one, two, three, four, five to represent where the hand is. Parents, the high notes are on the right side of the keyboard. The low notes are on the left side of the keyboard. Your child should know that. That's something we've been working on since the beginning of piano lessons, but it can get confusing sometimes, especially for my six and under students. Um, if that is a concept your child is still getting mixed up, you can put a little bird stuffed animal at the high side of the piano and a little fish stuffed animal at the low side of the piano. That means, parents, that if the notes are going up on the page and getting higher, we're gonna move this way across the keys. If the notes are going down on the page and getting lower, we're gonna move this way. So my first chunk would look like this. I'm gonna play a G. G, up, up, down, up, like that. If your child is five or six or older and struggling with reading, you're gonna to wanna to point to the keys first. So you would just point to the piano. G, up, down, up. You'll point to the keys with one hand, point to the notes on the page with the other. If your child is a little bit older, you may just be able to point on the page as they go. So you're gonna to wanna to point to each note and say the direction. G, up, down, up. All right, once you've got that chunk, yay! Praise your student to high heavens. And then we're gonna go on to our next chunk which, let me just erase these, looks like this. All right, we're still starting with finger one, we're still starting on a G, and we have sames. So if you are pointing, you're gonna point to the piano, G, same, same, and they're gonna play that key three times in a row. Again, point to the page, say the pattern as they are playing. Once they've got it, yay, that was so good. Okay, now we're gonna combine our two small chunks into a bigger, longer chunk, which is this. Okay, now, this might look scary to a five-year-old, so if they're getting a little bit intimidated, you can just point out, hey, look, this is just our two little chunks we did. Here's the first one. G up, down, up, and here is my second one. G, same, same. If your child is seven or eight and doing pretty solid with reading, you're probably gonna start with this size chunk, but for the younger ones, you wanna start really small. Okay, so my first two chunks would look like this. Parent is gonna be pointing along. The student is playing on the piano. You can see what my fingers are doing. G, up, down, up, down, same. Good job, lots of praise every time they get it. So you're gonna repeat that process then with the next two little chunks, combining them into bigger. And that might be enough for a five-year-old for the day. If that was pretty easy and they got it really well or for like a very confident six or seven-year-old, then you're gonna go ahead and combine all of those chunks into one big long line. So I'll just play that on the piano and you can watch and see what that sounds like. G, up, down, up, students are definitely going to need a pointer for the first few times. The more you do this with them, the easier it's going to get and they're going to get the song in their ear, so hopefully by the end of the week they're confident and able to play it on their own.